welcome back to our second episode of the uh, Practical Method podcast uh, that, that John and I have been starting and doing, and with the help of Michael Coe here, um, we, wouldn't be able, we wouldn't be able to do any of this without him. John Upshaw, are you here? Yep, I'm here. Yeah, this week we have Kelvin Ho, he's disciple number 97, um, which is 17 behind me, I'm number 80, and um, uh, we've known Kelvin for a long time, John and I have um for at least god what was it john when did we when did he first come to iowa and we really met him i met him yeah i met, I met him, him in uh, new york first yes what to say a little bit about that i met calvin uh in new york city what was it 2013 no that's 2012 yeah that's right 2012 and we went to uh, a camp that Michael Klander put on in uh, New Jersey. So that was when that was when you first met Kelvin. So when did when did I first meet him? When when did he come to Iowa? It was like 2000... 2013, when my family went to John's cabin. It's been that long. Yes. Oh well, Lord. there there has been three workshops and then three camps already. Uh, <laughs> there was one year that we didn't like there was one year after the camp i believe or mm -hmm. yes it's after the camp in 2014 when we you had a uh session that uh, is a workshop that you and john did together i think is in milwaukee oh yeah i remember that yeah. yep yeah yeah that year was one year with that kind of workshop and then after that i think uh the university of iowa uh you guys started the workshop uh, for three years uh, before we moved to do the North American camp. Yes, yes, that is exactly what happened. You have a better memory than me. Everything blends together in my life nowadays, Kelvin. So um, yeah, uh, so Kelvin has become good friends of ours. Uh, we chat with him pretty regularly. He's a dedicated practitioner of practical method Tai Chi. Um, he's a, a very good student. I think he has a fantastic ELU very technically precise and uh, so Kelvin tell us a little bit about yourself where'd you grow up at where'd you how'd you end up in where sure. you live now and well I, I grew up in Hong Kong until I was 14 then I moved to Canada um, that's 1988 and then and then has been basically in Canada since then mm -hmm. um, so went through high school and university uh, then, then work, get mar married, had two daughters and, uh, have been doing practical method since 2009. Yeah. So how'd you get started in practical method? Why'd you get started in practical method? Well, actually it was just, uh, at, at the beginning it was, uh, at work where there was an instructor who was teaching for free. And my friend, uh, asked me to, you know, go with him and mm -hmm. we went, uh, when we went there, um, it was a Friday afternoon, one hour class. So I started there. I, they, they just, the parent just told me it's Tai Chi. Okay, so sure, I'm going to try it with you. And then I went and then we were, you know, like very normal classes. We just follow instructors in front of the mirror and try to do the form. And he told me that was a Chan style Tai Chi Chan. I actually did not know there were different styles at the time. I only knew the, the, the image we have and was just, you know, old man doing it in the park. Mm -hmm. And, um, it, but it was very different. My, my recollection was that it was very different. It was very Kung Fu-like. Uh, the, were, the stands were bigger and, and it, didn't, it didn't resemble the, the kind of image I had in my head at the time. So I, I kind of liked it. Um, I didn't really do martial arts before and it was just Tai Chi, right? So, but, uh, the fact that I couldn't actually remember the move like while uh, that class was doing, because the class, although it was beginner, it was starting from um, the first move of that mm -hmm. form. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the, some of the people there had been doing it for a while. Um, and the teacher mm -hmm. there has been doing it for six years. Yeah. Um, so he just told me his chance. I didn't really say much. So I just followed him along and then, because after a few classes, uh, I realized I, you know, I wasn't really practicing. I was just going there once a week 
So I couldn't remember, I couldn't quite follow. So I wanted to search on the internet for videos uh, for what exactly, like just to you know, do a better job remembering the, yeah. the moves. Uh, so I searched, I looked chance out. And then on YouTube, I found, wow, there's actually so many uh, different uh, Tai Chi styles and I could not find one that looks like the one I'm trying to do. Like not at all. So you uh, actually started, so you actually started with practical method no uh, no no this is not practical method it was I, he not. just told me it was chan style oh okay i so see so it was just chan style i kept searching like chan style and then i realized there's wu style yang style and uh, wu hao style like all the different styles and yet none of them from youtube when i first searched looks like the one that i was doing at the time mm -hmm. uh so i keep looking looking and then you know got interested and just keep looking um, and then finally, I found the one that actually looks like it. Uh, it was done by a little kid. Um, <laughs> well, and, and it said, okay, this one actually looks like it. And then it gave me a name. No. Uh, and then, and then I, I searched again. I believe uh, it was Huan Yuan. So I searched Huan Yuan and I saw Grandmaster Feng video and then I said yeah yeah now it lo actually looks like this one uh, and uh, the, the teacher at the time did not tell me it was Chan style Huan Yuan and I was just searching for Chan style and of course with the name Huan Yuan uh, I start to see Master Chan's video because he was using Huan Yuan Academy uh, in Edmonton as the name of the school so I actually found him through Huan Yuan and I think his YouTube channel was also Huan Yuan um yeah that was a long time ago when he used to use that as his main that's right and and that's how i found him of course once i found him i i used his name to search then i started uh the very first video that i saw was the one that he shot in victoria uh, it was beautiful trees co colorful trees at the background when he was doing foundations yeah yeah i, I remember the scenery more so than than what he was doing uh it was just a beautiful shot, uh, video um, in my mind. It, I honestly, I think that was what attracted me. Uh, like, okay, there's something different. Of course, I found his name, and then I keep looking up his name. Um, and and also around that time, because I know I didn't know the moves, I, I kind of wanted to uh, learn it more formally. So I was looking up a local school here to see, you know, how, how and when they will start a new class so I can join. But it was in October uh, when I was searching. And so these class, beginners classes start typically in September, January. Um, so I was in the middle between the two beginnings. Mm -hmm. um, so, okay, I had to wait. But it so happens that uh, Master Chan was going to come to Toronto uh, in about two weeks. So, so and, backing up a second, what sure. what did you, what were you actually learning at the time? Did you find out what? It's Huan Yuan. It's Huan Yuan. Okay, it was Huan Yuan. It's actually Huan Yuan, right? And and he told me it was Huan Yuan Xin Yi uh, Tai Chi Chuan. Later, he gave me some handout uh, with the names of the form. Um, he was t actually teaching uh, the twenty four. Uh, at the time. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. So, so once I uh, searched uh, Master Chan's name, I found his workshop. His his the particular location was actually happens to be very close to where I was living at the time. It was, and that session was my first workshop um, in November, uh, two thousand and nine. Uh, it happened in at the basement of a church. Mm -hmm. um, With Master Chen. Yeah, it's Master Chen coming to Toronto for five days uh, from Monday to Friday. Yeah, so what was what was it like when you first met him? What did you think? What, why, why did you continue with it? Uh, well, from after I found his name, I saw a lot of the his clips. I I, I saw as many as I could that I, I haven't seen. I think I saw every one of them at the time that he had put out on, on YouTube and his website. And uh, he was teaching it very differently. Obviously, I was learning from the previous teacher, you know, uh, just following the form. I, I try to ask questions like, well, why do you do it like this? I, I kind of 
realize, well, the form was put together because it, to resemble some sort of uh, application, even though it may not be done for that purpose anymore, but it must be from that origin. And I asked the, the, the instructor, what, what was it that uh, a particular roof was done this way? It's like, why was your hand you know, doing a twelve in, the, in front of the stomach? He, he, he didn't quite explain it to my satisfaction at the time. And so that's why I started thinking, well, maybe I, I need a more uh, formal class to get that question answered. Uh, and Master Chen was teaching uh, in his video clips mm -hmm. very differently. He was actually showing application and people were kind of bouncing off of him or just falling down to the ground um, in a weird way. So it just fascinated me. And, and so I really, really wanted to check it out. It's like, why is it like this? Did you and, get to uh, fall down the first workshop? Oh, yes, for sure. He, ex he, he described it as I was like a paper. <laughs> yeah, when we first I just fall down when he, and whenever he said he didn't do anything, I fell down. And well, he said I was very weak, right? So, so I was. Yeah, you know, it's, it's interesting. So I think that the Tai Chi really changes the body, especially practical method. And one thing that I've noticed over time with Calvin is that in 2013, when he came to Iowa, and we, we, it was him, John, and I, and I think uh, Erwin Rintham. Uh, yep. Jeff. And Jeff Clevenger. There too, in in uh, Northeast Iowa, John's cabin. And we practiced for a, a few days there. And uh, Kevin, Calvin is a very small person. He's not um, a large human being by any stretch of the imagination. And so um, what's interesting and what's been really cool to see about Calvin and the, the practice that he does is that it's changed his body. So his body has 100% changed as he's gone through this. And so last year when he came to the camp uh, in Iowa and we pushed hands, I immediately could feel the change in him relative to what it was even the year before. So, you know, if you if you stick with the practice, I guess what I'm getting at is if you stick with the practice, sorry, my dog's barking in the background, the joy of being at home. So um, what, if you stick with practice and in practical method, it changes your body in ways that you won't even know. And um, one of those things is to strengthen your body, especially if you practice ELU a lot. And uh, Kelvin is a uh, master of training the ELU. <laughs> 30,000. Yeah, I think 30,000. When did you hit 30,000, Kelvin? Was it yesterday? April 8th. No, no, it was actually April 6th, about a month ago. Yeah, which really shows your dedication. And I think, you know, you've probably done more ELUs than anybody else uh, besides Master Chen. And um, I think that's really cool. It, it's, it just really shows your dedication as a, as a disciple and how much you've been involved. And it's, it's been really cool to see your growth um, through my eyes, whatever that means. It doesn't Thank really you. Matter. But it's, it's, it's been quite impressive. And I think people, when they do stick with it, you know, it's a, uh, I kind of think practicing practical method <clears throat> can be a long, uh, sometimes lonely road when you're just grinding ELUs every day or, or doing foundations by yourself, especially right now when we can't get together with other people. But, you know, we're hoping to bridge some of that with this podcast. And uh, yeah, I just want to thank Kelvin for coming on too. And we're, we're going to keep going. I just was getting off on a tangent there. So, um, so when you, when you started practicing, like what, I really want to get into this idea that you practice so many ELUs. Why have you done that? Like that really takes a lot of work. When well, did you start practicing so many? Yeah. And why did you uh, make that? Decision? Okay. Well, because the very first workshop that I worked on, uh, Master Chen told me to do, uh, well, actually he, he said you, you, you need to video yourself, uh, you know, regularly so that you can see yourself and, and see your improvement. So I did, and I posted them as well. The very first one, I just sent it to him and he started posting it. Like I sent him a YouTube video of what I was doing and then, and he posted it. And after that, I just, you know, posed it at the, uh, at the time, whatever website it was. I think it was already practicalmethod.com. So I posted it at practicalmethod.com as a post. Uh, he, he just said, you know, you just you do them. Uh, after the first workshop, I actually didn't remember any, any of it. I was just following the people there to do the first 13. It was the third uh, Toronto workshop at the time. And uh, people haven't completed the uh, ELU either there. And so they, they were still doing their first 13. So I was following them. 
uh, I couldn't remember any of it, but I did bought the CD, uh, v uh, DVD uh, for the ELU. So I cramped before the second workshop, I cramped like in the last week, just before the workshop, just so that I remember the first 13, because that's what they kind of covered uh, the previous uh, time. And uh, he just told me, you just keep practicing, and that's all you need to do. I said, well, that's kind of simple enough. <laughs> if I, that's all I have to do. So yeah. I did it. <laughs> and so you just started, that was your, that was why you started doing so many ELUs. No, it wasn't that many. And uh, John's question is when I started. So I completed the ELU uh, in August uh, 2010. And, and, then, and then I posted the first full ELU uh, for that. Uh, it's still available on YouTube if people want to you know, get a laugh out of it. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, so, so I did that. And at first, when I practiced, I was practicing with a friend. I actually um, had a friend who actually went with me uh, 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 into the workshop. So I, I got a partner for practicing. Mm -hmm. So we were learning the form together, essentially. And yeah, do you think uh, that, do you think that was helpful to have a person to train with? Definitely. Um, so, so I, you know, it's, it's hard just to do it by yourself. Like who's going to really going to do it if you really haven't got started. It's hard to say, oh, I'm just going to change myself all of a sudden and just go practice every day. It's like, I don't think that's really possible. No, I agree so with you. I'm one of the, one of the ways that I was able when I first started is that one, I had John Brown, who was sort of a teacher, but this, the uh -huh. other person I had and the person I trained with all the time was Gene Hess from Seattle. Right. And we would meet three times a week for like three years before he moved to Seattle because uh, he was in Iowa yeah. and we just train and train and train and we had no idea what we were doing we just yeah. tried to do the best we could and um, that's totally fine and I think that's a really important thing about practicing practical method is that you're going to be doing it wrong for a very long time you just have to to practice 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 and then when Master Chin comes and corrects you um, try to make those changes you know yes and, and you have to try to integrate them into your body and I think that is one of the results from training how you train specifically i don't want to speak for you necessarily but like my experience is that if you train repeatedly over and over and over again something like the foundations or elu and then when master chin corrects it you really have to try to work those in and then you train 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 yep. and yep. It, it, it's sort of this stop and go pattern that exists and but i think it's really important and so if you try to create a routine which is really what you need um that's a big thing can you so but, you know, one of the things I really want to get out of these podcasts is like why you train the way you do. To, to me, you're one of the most dedicated students. And like, it's, so why, why do you train that way? What is, what drives you to do that? It's, well, I, I, I realized uh, I, I was doing it. I, I was learning with my friend. So we completed it together. And mm -hmm. then, uh, but I was not practicing every day. I was practicing maybe like twice with him a week and then uh and part of the there's a content when we were practicing it's like i told him like okay we're going to do it five times uh before we push hands push hands was really the thing that i liked um so i i practiced five times with him and then we push hands just for fun really we don't know what we're doing which is for fun we push hands and then i realized or master chen told me it's like you know as you do these uh, ELU practices, it actually changes your body so that you get better at uh, push hands. And for whatever reason, I was getting better with my push hands. It's not because of any technique, it was just a little bit stronger than before. Uh, the structure was a little bit better. So, you know, you don't get pushed down the ground so easily, you don't fall so easily. Um, and I did see the fact that when I keep practicing ELU, uh, it, it was still improving. So. I guess because I still feel that it is improving my push hands, so I kept doing it. Nice, yeah, absolutely. So, um, when you approach training, what do you think about like how, how? How? What I'm trying to get out of here is, I really want to know or understand how people or why people approach practical method in a certain way. So, for you, you you said you were really attracted to the push hands, but 
to train with that idea in mind, what, how do you do that? What do you, what do you think about? What's your mindset? I, I, all I do is follow the best I can with the corrections I've given. Sure. And every time I'm giving corrections, essentially uh, it takes longer to do one ELU because I'm trying to incorporate that particular correction throughout the whole form because typically master chain just, you know, do you, you show him a session and he stopped you right away and tell you do this and that. And that, that instruction is not really just for that one move. It's an idea mm -hmm. that you need to incorporate throughout the form. So, you know, every time after the workshop, I would, you know, try to take that idea and put it in the form. And so the, the, the form has to evolve over time, I believe. Uh, and it, 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 it should be still segmented um, until it becomes not segmented by itself. It's not like you try to smooth things out. It's what do you mean? What do you mean by segmented? It means you have to do it in steps, hmm. one section at a time, slowly, like you write block letters compared to a cursor. Okay. Yeah, I see what you're saying. So, you know, I think um, one way that I've really tried to approach what you just talked about is to to focus on a particular thing, right? Mm -hmm. So when I train ELU, I focus on one, one piece. And the thing is, is I'll let this right or wrong. I don't, I don't care. I let some of the other stuff go as long as that one piece is the way it should be. And I, to me, to me, that's an important way to train because you can't focus on everything at once. Right. right. And the goal is to create I think a habit or to ingrain it or to make it natural, whatever it is you want to call it. I don't care what language you use, but the idea is that that one thing and what you were kind of hitting on there is to, to really ingrain one baby step into the form. So then when you do it in the future, it's just there, right? Yeah. Is that kind of, is that, is that an apt description for what you're talking yeah, about? Yes. You know, like, like the correction I'm talking about is a specific correction. It's like, mm -hmm. you know, I get, I, I write a lot of notes, but like really at the end, it's like you remember maybe three things out of the workshop that you really somehow clicked uh, or it, it caught your attention that like immediately when I go back to practice my form, I would try to incorporate it. And it's that one thing or two things uh, that, that I try to put it in. Um, and, and a lot of the times when I practice, I just say, well, let's not move the knee. Let's use that example. And so all you focus on is not move the knee uh, throughout the entire form in every uh, section of it, every action of it, that you just don't move the knee. Um, and just focus on that one aspect. And you know, train it for a few ELUs. And instead of being bored, and you pick another one, like don't pop your shoulders, like something like that. So when you do a whole whole ELU saying, don't pop the shoulders, I keep telling yourself because what I found was like my, your, my mind will wander off and, and just by the end of it, you look at it like, I forgot about it. <laughs> no, no, it's true, it's true. <laughs> In the early years, uh, like 2011, 2012, we all used to, uh, a group of us used to videotape our first 13 or yeah. videotape our ELUs and then we would post it and we would give uh, each other feedback. To me, that was a way of measuring, am I achieving my goals? Um, I know for a few years, I used to meet with Kelvin online on uh, Google Messenger for about two years. Yeah, about two years, Google Hangout. We actually started doing that before we start meeting in person uh, in, in New York. It was like, we, cool. I didn't know you guys did that. That's really cool. Yeah. So, so one thing, one thing um, that I also want to ask you about today is your teaching. You teach a lot. Um, yeah. And how did you, why did you start teaching? How did you start teaching? Uh, I know Master Chen really likes us to teach his disciples. It's, uh, uh, I started teaching, well, I, I, I started teaching in 2011. Um, yeah. I think I asked Master Chen, like, when I can I start teaching? He said, well, you can start now. <laughs> so I did. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I asked him the question. So, so I started in 2009. I 
finished remembering the whole form, the choreography in 2010. And then um, even uh, so between 2010 and late 2011, uh, I was practicing with my friend, but we were also, uh, there's another group uh, from the workshop that we're actually also meeting once a week. Uh, we rent a place in a community center. So we got get together uh, to practice once a week. Um, and uh, we did that until 2011. And, and then I was going to a community center to practice. So when he started saying, yeah, you can go teach. I started turning those times that I used to go to practice into class times. Mm -hmm. and, and then I realized, well, if those times that I used to practice becomes class time, I have to start practicing at other times myself. So I started doing daily. That was actually when in 2011, when I started teaching, I started doing daily practice as well. Yeah. Uh, with uh, social distancing and everything with uh, new students who are just starting out, what advice would you give to new students um, as a way of motivating them in a way of continuing their progress? Okay, for whatever reason you got attracted to practical method, congratulations. And, um, and we, practical method is an international school. So a lot of us started by just watching videos. So social distancing is just kind of forces you into doing that. So you purchase the videos, you start looking at foundations. There are a lot of foundations uh, or a lot of details in these foundation videos or ELU videos uh, that are created by Master Chen. There's so much you can actually try to copy uh, from them the best you can. And um, that's how I did it. Like, even though the Toronto workshop when it started was teaching the form, um, I was also learning from the video basically because I found I could not follow Master Chen during the class like and remember every detail. So I wanted to do my homework. And in fact, that model is used by a lot of people. You actually learn the form from the video. It's like you go to a lecture and you, you know, actually read the chapters first before you start listening to a prof professor about uh, during the class itself is it's similar. So you do your homework, you do your best you can from learning from those medium and then, and then practice it a bit. And so remember the choreography. So by the time you actually go to the workshop, hearing Master Chen and trying to correct you, uh, it's more uh, efficient that way. Uh, you can focus on his instruction as to just remember, okay, my hands needs to be here, my uh, feet needs to be here. Like otherwise you're just learning that. And, and that for me, you, you, you can fairly easily get out of the video. So you get much more out of the workshop when you actually know the form. And so, and so you're not carried, uh, like you, you're not bothered too much by 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 that, and you can post some real real uh, essence of what practical method is about. I see. How important how important do you think note taking is? I I took notes uh, because Master Sen said, well, you take two sets of notes. One is uh, how he set the the topic, and one is how you interpret the topic at the time. Because I I, I wrote them down but I don't really look at them that often, but I do look at them sometimes because uh, I thought I wrote something. I couldn't remember exactly, so I go back. And then sometimes I just, you know, I kept a block. So I went back years and look at what I wrote and try to see, well, did my understand change over time? And without that uh, notes there, I could not compare to what I remember anymore because my memory is not that good and I could not, yeah. And it will change on you. I, I, at this time, if I think back, like I thought I was thinking that way, but was I really thinking that way? I cannot tell. But if I look at that notes, at least that is what I said at the time. I think that yeah, became know, I, very useful. That, that's exactly right. I think when I, when I started taking notes, I didn't find myself checking them a lot, but it becomes almost a written history of yourself practicing yeah. and, and trying to understand what Master Chen is saying. And so yeah. then when you get to a certain point, you go back and read them, which everyone will. They'll go back and read what they've yeah. written. Sometimes you'll be like, damn it, what was I thinking, <laughs> right? Like, and, yeah. and which is totally fine, but that's, that's part of progression. And I think it's a really good written history for yourself. It's, it's a history. It's, it's like yeah. almost you telling yourself stories. <laughs> it's and, learning and a different language. 
Well, in the and, beginning, it was like yeah. learning a different language. Yeah. <clears throat> and 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 it became stories. How how you how the kind of mistakes you make. Um, it's what allows you to share it with your students as well. Yeah. Because they are going through exactly the same things. Like after a few years of teaching, I realized everybody kind of will fall in line in that fashion. And if they practice, they will make progress, but they also make the same mistakes. Yeah, absolutely. So I would like to talk about a mistake real quick. Yeah, go ahead. I would uh, like to talk about the time that um, Kelvin uh, took a picture with you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Do, do you remember that? We're telling a story now. So before we get into that story, I just want to say that Kelvin comes off as very professorial. He's very serious all the time. And um, when I first met him in Iowa, um, I thought we were dealing with this super serious dude. And it was on the last day before we were going to go, before he was going to leave. And we went to take a picture. And I'll let John pick up from there. So we're um, on the uh, banks of the Mississippi River with this bridge in the background. And Kelvin um, stands next to Levi. And they get in this pose. And Levi's um, standing. And he's, he's like this. And Kelvin's standing like this. And one minute, uh, Levi's smiling. And the next minute, Kelvin did a move and knocked him to the ground and just totally surprised attacked him. Yeah, I wasn't expecting it. Was classic. It was, pretty it was fantastic. classic. He just crushed me. And I was like, who is this guy? He didn't joke at all, all weekend. And now he just crushed me to the ground. It was pretty fantastic. It was a picture perfect moment. Yeah. You know, and, 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 and I think these moments, like getting together with as many uh, people to train as possible is really good. Um, you know, that's why we are going to tell little stories like this uh, throughout this podcast. I, I have one about Michael Coe when I trained with him on the mountain in 2011 that I'll tell sometime. Um, it was uh, kind of crazy. It was fun. And, um, you know, we, we all have these stories and I think it's important to, to tell these stories, to uh, get them out there so we can create a community. And that's really what this is all about. And, um, you know, I really want to thank Kelvin for coming on today. I think um, it's been good to hear from you, Kelvin, and, and good to see you. I haven't seen you in a while. And um, the longer this drags on, I don't think we're going to be able to have the North American training camp this year, but hopefully it'll continue next year. And um, in the meantime, we'll just try to connect in any way we can. I really want to thank Michael Coe for um, doing his internet wizardry. Uh, he's fantastic. And um, John Upshaw for planning all of this. Um, none of this would be possible without uh, all of us. So I'd like to thank all of us too. It's, it's uh, keep on keeping on guys and, and you know, keep training, keep working. And hopefully uh, uh, this will bring some sort of um, ideas into your brain that you haven't heard before. I think that's another really important thing is to hear different experiences from different people about practical method. And Kelvin brings some pretty unique ones. Um, he, uh, you. if you wanna, if you wanna look at a very precise form from someone other than Master Chen, uh, you should look at his forms. I think they're pretty fantastic. And if Kelvin, I could ask you to post your really old form, your first one versus one that you have re more recently. That'd be really cool under this. Yeah, sure. I kept it in a playlist. You can look at them. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, no, that'd be cool if you can post a link to that or something so people can yeah. go look at your progression. I think sure, I will. Funny. I go back and look at my ELUs from 2008 and I'm just like, what on earth was I doing? And, and for the, the beginners, um, if you feel like you're dangling out there, feel free to reach out to um, one of the disciples on Facebook, um, read the post on practicalmethod.com, or ask we chat. questions, yeah. we'll respond. Yeah, we chat too, um, if you don't have Facebook. Um, but uh, yeah, there's a lot of, lot of stuff out there. All right, well, thank you everybody for uh, coming today. And uh, that's gonna be it for today, guys. Um, there's one more thing I'd like oh, yeah. to um, talk about. So, well, since some, uh, well, some of the countries are still like really just locked down or just slowly um, opening up. Um, we, we, Practical Method has actually organizing um, oh, yeah. so far on the uh, online videos. So John and I currently are doing uh, uh, videos 
Um, so we provide our notes, commenting on the video, hopefully to help some people look at things. Because mm -hmm. one of the things uh, Masterson said was, uh, you have to learn to see uh, before you know what you should be following. Um, so a lot of the stuff that he's showing is honestly very difficult to see. And, and only through practice and in your own progress, you start to see more. And that becomes a very interesting aspect of it. So uh, some of the videos uh, that we are currently uh, sharing with you guys uh, uh, our attempts to give you our way of looking at it at this time um, with our current um, uh, stage. And that's how we look at some of the videos and hopefully that shares something that, that, uh, that you may not see for yourself uh, yet. And, and everybody should see it uh, given time. And uh, we are also uh, from Australia, James Strider is, uh, hosting these uh, online sessions uh, that he's teaching Huan Yuan, uh, Qi Gong, uh, for 13. And there should be more of it um, that we're currently preparing for. And so stay tuned um, so that um, you can get some of the benefits out of these sessions. Fantastic, Kelvin. Thanks for that. Awesome. I totally forgot about those things. Um, yeah, can you guys post links to that below this? Yeah. That'd be great. All right, thanks everybody. All right, thank you. Thanks, thanks, everybody. For, thanks for hosting. Yeah, thank thanks you for organizing for this. coming, Kevin. Thank you.